if the person is not born again by the one and only gospel. Any other gospel apart from the gospel of Christ leads to false conversion. Stay with me. There are many people in church even today who are bleeding. There are many people who are told come to church and get born again because you don't have a job. When you get born again, you will have a job. Another one is told, oh, you want to go to the university? This is born again. You get born again, you will go to the university. That person got born again, but he didn't go to the university. And now he takes God as a lie. Another person was told, oh, in this and this, get born again. Oh brother, you want to go away? Get born again. When you get born again, this and this will happen. And I'm people and church and they are shaking because I was trying to get born again so that I can get a job. And I don't have a job yet. So what's the need? Of me being born again. And that's why you will hear people say, If God is not for me, I don't see myself worshiping you again. You've had such. It is only because we have missed the point. We have missed the crux or the main part of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why many foundations. Yes, I'm in church, but today uh, I'm in church today, but tomorrow I'm going to buy water. I'm in church today, but tomorrow I'm engaging in. My faith is shaking. Because we are the ones who are at peace. Just go around on the street and open your TV and see what people are talking about. And see the kind of men of God that are speaking in our television. Let me also say this. From the fall of Adam and Eve, man has been trying to establish his own righteousness. When Adam and Eve realized that they have sinned, instead of going back to God, what did they make? Something to cover themselves. There was men of what? Leaves. Man 
until you come to the light of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Until a man comes to the knowledge of Jesus Christ and what he has done, he is still changing temporary things. What did God cover them with? When he came, skin. Right? And that was to show that what man can only do is to hide is something temporary. That is, okay, I really should have laid a, a graph about the uh, Bible explanation, Bible uh, interpretation, but because I don't have a lot of time, maybe another time will come and start that. But to just go quickly, uh, the Bible is written about Jesus Christ from beginning to the end. But in the Old Testament, Jesus Christ was not revealed. He was conceived. But he was dead. And so, because he was conceived, he would be shown with shadows. What is a shadow? Is shadow the real thing? But it shows there is someone who is coming. So he will be shown uh, shadows, typologies, and remember, the book of Genesis was written by Moses, and it was a vision. Moses was not there when all these things were happening in Genesis. Do you know, do you remember where Moses was born? In which book? Exodus. So, whatever Moses was communicating from Genesis, he saw it as a vision. Now, as I have told you, the Bible has Jesus in it, but he was not revealed. For example, we, we, we see the story of how uh, God made Adam and Eve. He first made Adam and then he made uh, Adam fall in a deep sleep. And then from there, he made who? Eve. And that was a typology of how Jesus Christ would come. Okay. Then God really need to make me fall in a sleep for him to take a rest out of me. No. It was a typology of how Christ will come. And then he will die. The sleeping of Adam to get Eve was Jesus Christ died so that a church will be born. The Bible called Jesus Christ the first born of the brethren. I'm trying to explain that the Bible talks about Jesus from the Old Testament. I'm just using very few examples for you to see. You remember when the Israelites were beaten by a snake? What was Moses told to do? To make what? And then lift it up. So that whoever looks at it will do what? And that was Jesus. It was a typology of how Jesus Christ will come and die on the cross so that whoever looks at him may not perish. I think those examples are enough. There are many more. Back to what I was talking about. I have said that any conversion that is not based on the gospel of Jesus Christ is false and cannot be to a firm foundation. And I've also seen the church, when I talk about church, I'm talking 
talking about you, but we are not talking about the duty or the death or we are the church, right? Yes, we are born again. But how many times have we forgotten those things and those things that matter that really Christ has called us for? And you know that the devil is very kind. And you come to realize that even many churches today, they have turned now from the gospel of Jesus. They are preaching now other things. How to get rich, how to do financial whatever. Hey, if today I would have been caught to bring about financial stewardship, I would not use the Bible. And I, I would call an enemy to come and teach financial stewardship. I know there are people who are There are people who are doing finance. Do you use the Bible as one of your references? Come on, shout. Do you? Because the Bible has not been meant to teach this thing. We are going, as we go, we are going to see what really is the gospel that we have been called to preach. And I am saying this to me. I am saying this to me. The reason why the are made the strength foundations it is because we have left the real thing that we were called for, and we have diverted the attention to other things. Despite Jesus telling us, "Do not worry about what you will eat," or Because even the gender, this thing, they do see. And before even you ask, I know. That is what Jesus has told us. But despite Jesus telling us, now the gospel has been, has been converted to me now. Prosperity gospel, I don't know. But then none of the disciples can change. Preach something called prosperity gospel. You will have a car. You will have a message. These things are good, but are these things the real key of the crux of the matter? Are there not believers who have good businesses? Are there not believers? Who have gone better universities even than some of us? So when we turn the gospel and start talking about and Paul says in the second second Corinthians chapter four verse five. Are you there? Second Corinthians, I just have go. That's right. What does this say? For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ is Lord, and ourselves as your servant for Jesus. So the reason God has called us is not to preach about how much we have achieved, the schools we have got, what we have attained. But 
that preach about Jesus Christ. Because he is the core of the scriptures. The scriptures testify of him, but not our own experience. I may have very good experience, but I cannot save you. They are good, but they cannot save you. And then, I don't think we are going to read a lot of scriptures. Let's go to Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 5. Once you get born again, the aim of them or Satan is to make you compromise the word of God. Read what it says. It says uh, verse 5, second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. Uh, let's start from verse 4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, and every hand that is not still against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of God. For you to be rooted in Christ when you get born again, you must come to the knowledge of who you are. It is only through reading the scripture and rightly dividing the word of God that we can realize the position that God has given us. There are many times that we may go astray looking for things that have already been provided in Christ Jesus. Just because we don't have the knowledge, we have not come to the knowledge of Christ, of who we are. So once you get born again, you want to equip yourself with the word of God so that every argument that has been raised and finished the knowledge of Jesus Christ will not shake you. But how many people? Take time to read the Bible. Assess yourself, probably seven days a week, 24 hours. How many times do you equip yourself with the Bible? You don't know. And that's why the enemy has taken advantage of believers. But then let me tell you, very many Christians are born again and spirit free, but very few are free. Why? Because sometimes we don't engage in reading the word of God. And so the enemy now takes advantage to convert you to be what you are not. And to forget your position as a believer and what you have received. Many 
Christian nowadays, they don't, they just want to go to church and be told to receive, receive, receive. You don't know what you are receiving, Pastor. But that is what, that is what we are reading. We have reduced the prospect to be received, received. And we have been told to receive things that even as believers receive without going to church. Even now. And I'm not saying these things are bad. A good cast. A good business is good. But really, is that special red believers? No. What is special red? It's the message of the cross. These things are good and you will have them, but they should not be Like the things we have reduced the gospel to be. And as I have told you, many Christians today are pleading because someone was told, uh, give 500 within two days, you are going to drive a car. Uh, give this within. But now they take God as a lie because that has not happened to me. And if you are that kind of a believer, and you don't know the reality of the gospel of what has called you born again, then when you don't receive that, you will throw up your hand and say, enough of this Jesus. We can't do this as ours. We from them. I was, I was uh, most um, afraid in the coast. He came there to be prayed by, and uh, many of you know Pastor Ezekiel. You know? Okay, I don't go there and I'm not here to judge. That you tend to read the word of God and develop a personal relationship with Him. You are an actress. That was a church. And you know, Jesus said this thing that we should not be Christians who are carried by, by miracles. And so, Look at what he says in Matthew 10. For false Christ and false prophet will rise and show great signs and wonders to deceive, if possible, even the elect. The elect are those who are saved. So just because you saw someone performing a miracle, and the person of God. So if you don't have the word of God, you have to change. And I'm not doing this to scare you, but I'm just telling you if at all we are going to be those people who are built on a strong foundation that cannot be shaken, we must first take time to read the word of God and establish our foundation. So that there is nothing. We will not be deceived. There are many things that we have reduced the gospel into me. But how about we come to the knowledge of what Christ has done to us and who we are? And you know Jesus, uh, the Pharisees and the tribe kept asking for miracles when we were just in the best show under the 
And he told them, not going to give you any sight, apart from the sight of John. Okay, I have told you the whole Bible. Talk about Jesus. In shadows, in typology, and all of them. Jonah, be swallowed by fish and take three days on the typology of how Jesus will die. And then after three days, he died for Jesus. So he died the only thing that the Son of Man will die. And on the third day, he will be resurrected. And until we come to that knowledge that the gospel is not about what the people reduce it to be, then our foundations are never going to be strong. Paul cautions the church in Galatia about turning to another book. Let's read uh, Galatians our chapter 1. Starting from verse I am astonished that you are so quick deserting the one who called you to live in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel. Next verse. Which is really no gospel at all. Evidently, some people are throwing you into confusion and are trying to pervert the gospel of Christ. That is what is happening today, confusion. Receive a car, you don't receive confusion with God in peace. You will come to be a to be shocked when you realize that actually the things that the devil offered Jesus are some of the things that we are living for it to run. Power, wealth. Those things are not perfect. But why did Jesus refuse them? He knew this is not what I'm called for. Yes, this is a good but that is not what I'm for. And so Paul is cautioning Galatians. Let me read and TV. I marvel, New King James Version. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Then you hear what Paul says. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let it be a curse. Now the question comes which gospel is Paul preached? Because that is the gospel we want to preach. Go to me, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3. For I delivered to you first all that which I also received. What did you receive? That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now let me ask you, well, where did God receive it? For I received, probably received from the Gospel of Luke, because Paul was not there with 
Jesus was was the guy that said. So probably he received this gospel from you. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So what really is the gospel? The dead, burial, resurrection, and glorification of Jesus. That is where our foundation is. All the other things are good. You can have as many as you want. But it is only this gospel that humbles us back to remember what Christ has done for us. Jesus also said, and uh, this is Paul preaching that uh, what I uh, uh, say that uh, he is telling Corinthians that I deliver to you that for which I received. This is the gospel that Christ died uh, for our sins according to the scriptures. Now, when you see the word scriptures, okay, one, one rule of interpret of Bible interpretation is interpreting the Bible within its context. We fit in the Bible. We don't take the verses in the Bible to beat us. We don't create a God and then we support him from the verses we make from the Bible. But we follow the God according to what is written in the scriptures. So look at Jesus uh, at Luke 24, 25, and 27. Luke 24. So, and I paraphrase this story from my uh, verse 13. There were two guys, one of them was Cleopas. And then they were talking about what had just happened. They didn't even know that it was Jesus. They were saying that, did you hear what happened? That Jesus of Nazareth, they knew Jesus, but even when he came to them, they could not realize this was Jesus. So they continue, and then Jesus here um, catches up with them, verse 17. What kind of conversation is this that you have with one another and you walk and have sat? Then it's uh, Cleopas 3. Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? Actually, they are talking about Jesus, and Jesus is here asking them. What are you talking about? And they don't know the person they are talking about. He is right there. So he asked them, he's very curious. What then? And then they explain how uh, how Jesus was crucified. You go and read the whole uh, text. How he was to live uh, Israel, but he has been crucified. He has been buried. Then, verse 25, look what Jesus says to them. Then he said to them, Oh, foolish one, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not the Christ to have suffered this thing and to enter into his glory? The prophet had prophesied that Jesus will die, be buried, and resurrect on the third day. 
but they had not believed. They had read all that the prophet, uh, all, all things concerning Jesus, but they, did, they could not believe. They did not believe in that Jesus would rise again. And then, beginning at Moses and all prophets, he responded to them in all the scriptures, the things concerning Beginning from where? From Moses. Moses here doesn't represent Moses, Moses. To represent the Bible of Moses. So in short, he explained the whole Bible. That is from Genesis to Malachi. Are we together? By this time, these other books were not written. That's why I told you, when you see a word, like for example, scriptures, in that corner, it means from Genesis to Malachi. Then he expounded to them in all the scriptures of the things concerning who he said Jesus. So actually the scriptures testify about Jesus from Genesis to Malachi. And I'm telling you this thing so that nobody will come to distract you with this and other philosophies. This is the only way you can be grounded in the gospel of Jesus. So, correct Bible interpretation is key for any believer. In order to stand in normal, correct and accurate interpretation. But then let me tell you, if you read the Bible just like a novel, you will be confused. Because there are parts that the Bible looks that like it contradicts itself, but actually it doesn't. For example, if you go and preach to an unbeliever and you tell them, for God so loved the world that he gave, it's only because you can. And then the next thing you tell them, do not love the world. They are going to be confused. Jesus loved the world. He gave his only son, and then you are telling me not to love the world again. So for them to understand, it's not a contradiction. For them to understand, you must explain to them. For oh, God so loved the world. The first word is not. Uh, it is where you must be. God loves, loves human beings. The second word, do not love the world. It is a lifestyle. You understand? So a correct Bible interpretation must be done to start in the knowledge. Another thing that looks like contradiction. You read in the Old Testament. And then the Old Testament says, that Elijah went where? The Elijah died. Was taken to heaven. And then here comes John. Jesus is speaking and says, No one has ever. No one has ever seen God. So, someone would be confused. If an angel went to heaven, now Jesus would say, Nobody has ever seen God. Which heaven is in God? So, correct exegesis or correct interpretation of the Bible 
must be set in order to set in the knowledge and to see Paul tells Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 18 from time you have known holy scriptures that are able to make you wise for salvation 2 Timothy 3.15 He continues and says, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So that you may be what? You may be complete, then I live quick for every good work. And now, as I am going to wider, Paul is addressing the same in my face. When you read from Ephesians. And brethren, I want to tell you, if you want to stand on a strong foundation, you must understand. What Christ has done for you, and what is your position as a believer? Men came, they traded things that they have, they called it the cash. They took few buses, they included the cash, they called it religion. And if you are going to stand, you must rise above any religious religion. And Paul is right. Let's go through it. I'm going to finish. He starts by reminding them, Ephesians chapter 1. Remember, Paul is writing to say to people who are born again. He starts to remind them of redemption in Christ. And Paul is talking to a person of the Latin. There's no way you're going to see that. But if you were, Paul gives them a reason where they should start from to follow Jesus. He starts by telling them the redemption that they have received. And he says in verse 3, uh, chapter 1 of the Revelation, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Not we bless us. What is the text there? He has blessed us. You might not be having anything now. But that, is, that doesn't define you as a believer. God has already blessed you with every spiritual blessing. Not based on what you have, not based on what you are capable of doing. But by just believing in this one, you have been blessed. I want you to see the approach and the mindset that God is giving the church. You know, once you tell me I'm blessed, I will stop going around looking for blessings. But 13 and 14, he tells them, In him you also trusted after you had the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were saved with the Holy Spirit. Of promise, who is the guarantee of our inheritance? You are saved. 
And that's why I just believe it. The Holy Spirit is resident in me. I don't want you to have a mindset like Holy Spirit is someone you call him and then you come. What did Jesus say? It is for your advantage if I go. I will lead to you a helper, comforter, who will do what? Will abide. What is your life? Does he go and come? Abide with you forever. Actually, the ascending of Jesus Christ was a healing taking residence in a believer. And then chapter 2, he tells the friends that it is great through faith that you have been saved. It is not because of your own work. Adam, it is not because you have made some links that are different that I have saved you. No. It is because I am full of much. And he starts to tell them. Um, chapter 2 verse 1 and he made you alive who were dead in sin and trespasses and that's why I tell my believers you don't need to give your life to Christ you need to receive Christ an unbeliever has no life when we teach no Christ you are dead dead so we receive Christ, he says, He is the life. And he who has him has life in Verse 4 he says, But God, who is rich, he has started by telling them where they come from. For you to stand firm, you must remember where Jesus has taken you. You are dead in sin. And then, God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespass, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the Heavenly place. You are seated with Jesus. Where Jesus is, that is where also you are. I want this to be your, your mindset that where Jesus is, that is also where you are. You are dead in sin, but He has raised you. To sit with him in the heavenly realms. Verse 14, he says, For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. That middle wall of separation means Jews and Jews, because the salvation was known to be of Jews. But he has made he has broken that wall of separation so that all those who believe in him are both as one. And verse 19, he tells them that now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household, household of God. You are a citizen of heaven. So that these are your realities. Gonna be a bit fast. Then chapter 3, he talks about the mystery. This is the journey that the Paul is taking the church in Ephesus. So that they may hold strongly the ground that they have. He tells them that the things that have been hidden. In ages, they have been revealed and unwrapped. 
Of course, it is Christ who was hidden in the Old Testament. But now he has been revealed and rushed. And therefore, he urges them. And verse 11, he tells them. And to make all see what is fellowship of the mystery from which, from the beginning of, sorry, verse 11, according to the eternal purpose which is accomplished in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have our promise and access with confidence through faith in Him. Now you have a direct access to the Father. Because when the Father sees you, He doesn't see you, He sees Christ. Because Christ has taken everything on you. So that we may stand holy and satisfied. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, during the old days, only the priests would go to the Holy of Holies. Then they would tie it with a camera. In case anything happens there, on a boot. But by the virtue of the cross, the veil is broken to two. Now we can see God. And then in chapter 4, you will allow me to finish there in chapter 4. Because I can see it already. He tells them, walk in unity. And this is the unity of God's faith. We are one in spirit. We have been joined by one God's faith. And how are we going to walk in unity if we are preaching differently? How are we going to be united in the gospel if I come here and tell you that the story of David and Goliath, Goliath is your hand. And that your prayers are the storm that are going to hit your enemy today. When I should be telling you actually that Colin represents the sin that was so great, and David represented that blood, Jesus Christ, and that that fight represented the greatest fight on the world. And that's why Jesus said. If you study the scriptures and you don't see Jesus, the foundation can only be shaken. Because all the other things are fade away. But Christ is in So Christ has been preached even in all the sectors. The serpent being lifted, Jesus Christ. Moses being told to speak with the rock to, to, so that it can bring water and people may live, Jesus Christ. Man up from heaven, Jesus Christ. He says, I am the bread. It's not actually man, it was a hypothesis of how Jesus Christ would come from heaven and whoever eat he would live. The scriptures know about Jesus. And I want, as I wake up, I want you to come to the knowledge that grace purchased you with a very great price. And it is the will of Christ, of Jesus, that we will start family, not because of what we are capable of. They see that our own righteousness, those acts that we cause, can save us from a filthy, filthy life. So from today, I want you to see, see what you are capable of doing. I know there are people who cannot get born again, they cannot convert Jesus Christ because it is power. Are you putting it? I do this and this, I don't drink, so my people are saved. You are born without believing in what Jesus Christ has done. It's like filthy, filthy life. And then there are other Christians, yes, they have been born again. But they have 
impact in addiction, they have been packed in things that they don't love themselves. But they are not able to free themselves from there. Because all they did is that their strength is required. No, I want you to take it to Jesus. We're given a story of a man who a doctor I could went to our past and told him, I have been trying to stop this smoking this cigarette, but I can't. He told him, Of course you can't, because you are trying to stop it by yourself. But just acknowledge that you can't and tell Jesus I need to stop it. Of course, when a believer is born again, there is growth. At first you may struggle with one, two, three. But as you continue growing in the word of God, you overcome. Only the word of God. Because the word of God will teach you to pray. The word of God will change your mindset. And you will start to walk. And God has written. He says that I will write my laws in their heart. So we don't struggle actually to walk in righteousness. But it is God who works in us. Let's be on our feet. You are not saved by what you are able to do. Yes, of course, we are saved unto good works. Because we want to receive good, uh, you, you receive Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit takes residence in you by default. You must bear fruit. There are some things about you that must change. And so today I'm going to speak to someone who feels that my foundation is shaking and I don't think that I can make it. I don't think that I can start. This salvation seems to be not my real thing. I want you to take it from me that Jesus did not just sing, but Jesus died on the cross and he has paid for your sin. He has paid for the sins of the whole world forever. Even the child, uh, the children that we will bear, generations to come, they will be get born again by the blood of Jesus that shed. So you can walk out. And I asked you, and that was when we were speaking to one to three people about the Bible. They told me, uh, I have been saved, but I really struggle with it. And this is the message of grace. You know, many people, we are preaching the gospel of grace, which says that you are already forgiven. You just need to believe. Because they think people with God do what they like. But actually, grace makes us responsible. And that is the gospel that I preach because it will make you responsible. If you can think of what Christ has done for you, that is what will give you the strength to walk in the right path. But not what you are capable of doing. I went, I was now. Um, a leader, youth leader. And I told them, God has forgiven you. And now you need to come out. As you are, and allow God to work on you. A week did not end. And I started receiving messages. Jonathan, I have been struggling. I've been struggling with it. I've been struggling with my salvation. I've been struggling with sexual immorality. I've been struggling with this. I thought that. I just hate it. Just like I know that some of us, maybe who are going through those addictions, you have tried even to stop the drinking habit, but you just fail yourself. And you feel bad about it. From today, Stop trying to stop by yourself, but just give it to Jesus and look at him and tell Jesus, I want to stop this. I don't love it. 
Because we must walk in light. I'm free. In Christ I'm free. No chains are holding. 